at times there could be restrictions on data preventing you from hosting your applications on cloud this could be due to the law of land or business financial or other reasons so this calls out for an on prem or a hybrid deployment in this demo i'll set up a mule runtime on my local system so before we start off we need to understand what a hybrid cloud is so when you say it's hybrid there could be a scenario where you have your runtime on your on prem machine like on your local system for in, in this case and the control plane which regulates your api applying policies will be on the cloud okay so in this case if you can see uh, we have any point platform which is managing your api and that is on the cloud hub and runtime manager api manager all that is part of any point platform so that is on cloud and that is called a control plane because it is controlling your application and then you have the runtime plane runtime plane is a mule standalone server which is placed on your local systems uh, which are on premise and that acts as a runtime plane so when there is such type of scenario it is called a hybrid deployment or a control plane on cloud and your runtime plane on your on prem so to have this we have to first download a standalone server of mule so you have to navigate to this site and download a runtime i have already downloaded the mule standalone server so let's okay so this is the standalone server i have downloaded it and extracted it so if you go to bin folder you'll find this file mule.batch so you have to run this file but before you run this file ensure that you have java home set just in case if you do not have java home value set and also the path variable you can you can have a temporary work around i'll show you because in most of the systems uh, they have uh, they do not have admin access so if you want to try this demo and you do not have java home set you can try this out uh, open a cmd where your mule.bat file is and you can use this set command set java underscore home and the path where your jdk is located like in my case it's in c program files you can have it over here and then set path the path variable so path variable will have the value of java home which is up to jdk and then i've added bin and then append the existing path so this will modify your system variable so you can copy this and run it over here so this would change your system variable now if you see a ct you can see uh, java home see there is java home and the same could be seen over in the path file see the java home up to bin so in this way you can set up temporary variables in my case it was already set up but in if in your case if it's not set up you can temporarily set the variables so all we have to do is mule run this mule dot bat or you can double click or also use mule start command so it's starting up the mule standalone server okay so if you can see mule is set uh, is up and kicking every 5 seconds okay so if you noticed there is uh, when it starts it has a wrapper started as console and there is a service wrapper from tanuki so let's try to understand what exactly is happening when we are starting up the standalone runtime So what exactly happens when you run the mule dot bat file? So when you run the mule dot bat file, it internally calls a service wrapper which is created by Tanuki. 
So what your service wrapper does is it's a it's a wrapper al around your mule runtime. The job of this service wrapper is to add uh, to monitor your runtime in case if it gets crashed or anything else happen, any error occurs. The wrapper can restart the container, the mule runtime on its own. So that is the purpose of this wrapper. In this wrapper, you can pass additional arguments and it will uh, automatically pass on it on to runtime. We'll, uh, I'll show you uh, in the next section. So the wrapper mule bat calls wrapper and mule runtime in short is a Java application. It's built on top of Java and Spring. So there is a class called mule container bootstrap. So this is the main class that starts your runtime. So Tanuki service wrapper will run a Java command and will start up this container bootstrap. So th that's the role of the service wrapper and that's what happens when you run the mule.batch file. Okay, so uh, let's go and see the configuration, uh, how Tanuki is reading. So here is a wrapper.conf file and this is where the configurations are stored. So if you see, there are multiple options to change, like you have GC settings, you can modify this and uh, your application will work accordingly. Other than that, if you have to add uh, uh, le let's uh, see the uh, main file uh, main java class which gets invoked um, okay so see this is the java main class which tanuki invokes it's mule container bootstrap as i have shown in the previous image and then if if you happen to add some extra uh, arguments to the jvm you can always do that using the additional parameters which are present over here so uh, let me show you so here it is wrapper.java.additional17 so they have entered you if you want to add your own you can copy this and just change the number to 18 and pass on your arguments whatever you want to pass on so in this way you can modify this wrapper configuration according to your requirements adding any uh, arguments or anything of that if you also want to change the size of uh, meta space size and other things uh, heap size you can change it from here So now that we have understood the overall structure, how the uh, mule server starts, now we will try to deploy an application to this standalone runtime. So our application is, uh, the runtime is started. So how do we deploy an application to this? It's pretty simple. You have to open, uh, there is an apps folder and in this apps folder all your applications would be present so if you have a jar of your mule application just place it over here and it will start so for demonstration i already have a jar uh, you can create this jar by uh, by uh, following an uh, mvn command mvn clean install and that would create a jar for you again if you don't have maven home install you can use the same uh, trick to do the thing uh, set using a set variable set the values and in the same cm in the same cmd you have to set it and then run the mvn clean install command so it will create this jar for you so since i already have this jar i'll copy this and paste it in the apps folder so the moment i pasted the uh, it in apps folder you can see it got converted into a folder system right the jar got extracted and got converted into a folder system and if you can see over here Uh, 
the application has started let's uh, let's try to hit so it took some time to start the application but once uh, you place the jar into this apps folder uh, it create it extracts uh, the files from that jar and then uh, it also creates an anchor folder but now let's see if the application is successfully deployed and running uh, this uh, is a hello world example it is simply setting the payload to hello world so we'll try to run local host it's hosted on port 8081 so yeah there we have a hello world uh, uh, returned as a payload so if you see there are uh, there are two f uh, one file and one folder one file and one folder so this is an anchor file and this anchor file helps you to undeploy your application see if you open it it says delete this file while mule is running to remove the art artifact in a clean way so once you delete this the application gets automatically undeployed so let's try to delete this let's just so we have deleted it and now let's try to run it again see the site can't be reached so in this way you can deploy your application and undeploy your application on a mule on a mule runtime so now if you want to redeploy it just place the jar again so now that we have undeployed the application if you want to stop the runtime you can also stop it just by clicking the uh, control plus c and it will ask you to if you really want to stop So it uh, usually uh, it's taking some time. My system is slow, but it uh, usually will ask you, uh, "Do you want to stop the batch process?" And once you click on Y, this uh, standalone runtime would shut down. Okay, so th that's how you shut down a runtime. Well, now let's go to some other folders of the runtime, standalone runtime. This was the apps folder. Here you can place any artifact uh, in jar format and then it will uh, extract it and create uh, an anchor file which can be deleted to undeploy artifact okay now you have dot mule folder mule folder contains all the data related to your runtime instance okay then you have this uh, configuration folder which has wrapper.conf and you can modify it in the libs folder it will have all the libraries that mule requires to run your application okay and there is a log folder all the log related to your runtime or even your app would be placed over here so whenever you have uh, your application deployed and it has a log file so all your log files should be generated over here if you if you open it we can see see the log the same log that is being displayed on console is also visible over here right the same thing that we have we saw over here is being visible over there so and then policies it will have if you are applying any policies uh, those will appear over here so in this way you can set up a standalone runtime and in next video we'll try to connect this uh, standalone runtime with the cloud so that it can be managed from the cloud if you can see we have completed the first part which is setting up a runtime so we have completed the runtime plane now the only thing left is to connect this runtime plane with the control plane uh, meaning connect it to uh, show its visibility in the any point platform and from where it will be controlled so that's it for this video thanks for watching